Assalamu alaikum everyone. Thank you for coming to this pre-event halqa. Does everyone know why they're here? Huh? To meet Khabib? Well, inshallah he comes. <laughs> Let's make dua. But even if he doesn't come, which let's hope that he does. We are in fellow going to use this time to learn a little bit from him, even though it's not directly. But were you all able to see, like, on like the event page for this event, there was an article that was posted? Did anyone get a chance to look at that article? Okay, that's fine. So everything will be new. No one's going to know the answers. Because there will be a quiz at the end. We're not in school anymore. These are my students right here, so yeah, they're, they're going to be picked on extra for notes. Okay, so hopefully you guys, who wants to go ahead and just mention Khabib's name, full name, who wants to give it a try? Yes, come up here to the mic. Do it, you raise your hand first, you got to do it, you got to say his full name. Like you're announcing it as if he's walking in to the UFC arena. You got it, you ready for it? Let's do it. Okay. All right, there we go. Now let's wants to do it with some hype, as if he's about to enter into. Okay, let's go. Come up, come up here. Introducing. There we go. That was more exciting. You did a good job too. You guys got it. All right, awesome. Does anyone know what his name means? Any idea? That's okay, we'll get to it. Just just think about it, okay? Try it. Oh, you got it. Yeah. I think I know a part of it, like Magomeda or Muhammad. Good, okay. So we got a part of it, right? So just try to figure it out, right? Think about his name. You probably can figure out parts of it. Um, sorry? Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. He, he was the closest so far. But yeah, inshallah, we'll get to his name also. So basically what this article does is it's uh, looking through lessons that we can learn from Khabib's win. So who knows Khabib's record? Yes. 30-0. Not 30-0. 29-0. 29-0. And, and what about his MMA record? 49-0. Like so his professional record, right, 29-0, his MMA record is 13-0. So he's undefeated all around no matter what, right? Never been taken down, undisputed champion in his division. Awesome. So what are the things that stand out about Khabib? So after he wins his last fight, who was his last fight against? Yes, good, Justin Gagey. And how did he win that round? Yes. What type of submission? Triangle. Triangle. There we go. Right? He got in the nut. Triangle choke. And he put actually Justin to sleep. Ref didn't see him tap. Justin went out. Nap time. Right? After he wins, what was the thing that Khabib did first? Who remembers? You know all the answers. You know all the answers too. And you. Okay. Who else wants to? Give it a shot. What's the first thing Khabib does after he wins? Yes. Huh? Sujood. And what is he doing in Sujood? He's crying. He's crying. Right? As soon as he wins, 29 and 0, the ref calls the victory. The first thing he does is he goes down into Sajda and he begins to cry. Who knows why is he crying? Thank you. Oh, this is dad, dad. What about it? Yeah. Yeah, so his father passed away before his final fight. But his fight was coming up. And so in the preparation for his fight, he was basically blocking out this major aspect that was going on in his personal life. And he had to focus on training. He had to discipline his mind so that he could focus on making sure that he was able to perform. And as soon as that moment ended, all of those emotions flooded into him and in front of millions of people, 
he breaks down into sajda and begins to cry. Now just imagine this scene for a moment. This man, who is the manliest of men in our times, completely undefeated, has never been taken down, pure strength. When his victory is secured, he has these two responses that show what type of man he is. One, he is a man that is dedicated first and foremost to his faith. He falls after every single one of his fights, after every single one of his victories, straight into sajda, recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is in control. There is no one that has power. No one possesses an ounce of power except for Allah. And He is able to show that to Muslims and non-Muslims across the world. So you guys are familiar with this concept that none have power except Allah. What, what do, what's the saying that we say for that in Arabic? What is the saying for that in Arabic? Try again, yeah? There we go. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That none has power and none has might except Allah. And so Khabib is able to demonstrate this type of strength and give all of his credit away to where it belongs to Allah. And then what are the first words that come out of his mouth after he takes his victory? What's the first thing that he says? Alhamdulillah. Right, and what does Alhamdulillah mean? Yeah. Okay, good. So what was the word that you used? Think, right? To thank Allah. Anyone else want to try? We have that on the board. What else could Alhamdulillah mean? Not God is great, not God willing. Okay, gratitude. So thankfulness, gratitude, yeah. Thankfulness, okay, so we have this idea of thankfulness. So this is where we're going to do a little bit of learning today also, okay? Alhamdulillah has two aspects, okay, two aspects that no other word consists, can mix these two words. So when you say Alhamdulillah, you are acknowledging two things. One of them, he said, the aspect of sugar, gratitude, thankfulness. And why would you thank someone? Because they did something for you. Right, so if someone gives me something, I respond and I say, thank you. So Alhamdulillah has this aspect of thanking Allah because of all of the blessings that He gives to us. But it has another aspect as well, which is to praise, thana. That we're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're glorifying Him. We're saying all goodness belongs to Him. So we're elevating Allah above everything else. So Hamd has these two aspects then, of shukr and thana, gratitude and praise. So think about that the next time you're reciting Surah Fatiha. Right? The next time you recite Surah Fatiha and you thank Allah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we're not just thanking Allah for the blessings that He has given us, but we're praising Him even if He didn't give us anything. So it's praise and thanks. Is that clear? Okay, awesome. What else? So what lesson can we kind of take from Khabib being able to stand there and say Alhamdulillah in front of millions of people? Any ideas? What do you think? Sorry? Can you speak louder? Don't be afraid of being Muslim. Good. So what's one way that we can not be afraid of being Muslim. 
One way that he's teaching us to not show fear for being Muslim is to have a type of Muslim vernacular. Have a type of Muslim slang, a Muslim way of talking. Right? How many times do you hear in English, right, ways to speak that are inherently Muslim? So for example, you'll see sometimes people they'll have like their entire sleeve, their entire arm filled with tattoos. And then they'll have some Chinese symbols, and then they'll have some Buddhist symbols, and then they'll have something written in Arabic, and then all of them mean weird different things, and you're just like, you don't know what this guy's thinking about. And then, in the middle of all that, they'll throw in something like, oh, with hardship comes ease. Right? With hardship comes ease. Where's that, where's that from? The Qur'an. Right? إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed, with hardship comes ease. Or, someone they're talking and they say, and they say God willing. Right? They'll say, what is God willing? Inshallah. So, there's this thing that needs to be introduced that you all have the power to do. That you all can make the next trend on TikTok, the next hashtag on Twitter, the next whatever it may be. Of using Muslim vernacular. Using Muslim lingo that becomes widespread and popular. And so when people say, oh, what's that mean? Where's that from? Oh, it's those Muslims like Khabib who talk like this. So introducing a type of Muslim language into our culture. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, so that's the first idea. Khabib also gives some other advices and suggestions to people. So there's this famous hadith of the Prophet in which he says that the strong believer, al mumin al qawi khayyum min the weak believer, is better than the weak believer. That the strong believer is weak is better than the weak believer, but in both of them there are good. al mumin al qawi khayyum, right? He is better than the believer that is weak. So, what does this mean? What does it mean to be a strong believer versus a weak believer? Yeah. So they have more actions. Okay, good. A strong believer has more actions. What else? What, does, what else does a strong believer mean? Embrace their religion more. They don't have fear for being Muslim. What's the easiest answer here? Huh? Practicing Muslim. Yes, good. Practicing Muslim. More actions, more understanding. What's the even more obvious answer? A strong believer is better than a weak believer. Higher Iman, good. Easier answer. Belief, good. Easier answer. He's strong. That he is strong. That the believer is physically what? Strong. Right? Let's listen to the words again. A strong believer is better than a weak believer, but in both there are good. So what does that teach us then? That yes, we're supposed to have high faith, of course. We're supposed to exert our efforts in memorizing and believing and praying and all of these things. But what else does that mean? Very good. Focus on the things of this life as well. Focus on building up your strength in this life. Focus on learning how to be strong 
physically and mentally and spiritually in this life. What's the first one of those? Physically as well, right? To be strong physically. That's also a part of our religion. We don't just give up on physical strength. We learn how to protect ourselves, how to protect our families, how to defend ourselves, how to defend our honor. How are we going to defend our honor if we're weak physically? If we're weak physically, if you look at the descriptions of the Prophet ﷺ, he was stronger than 40 men. If you look at the descriptions of Umar Khalid bin Walid, Ali all of these great Sahaba, the names that you know, all of them had physical strength. They were strong physically as well as spiritually. That they would be able to carry swords in one hand, that it would take the average person two hands to carry. That they would be able to ride on their horses with swords and bow and arrows when other people would only be able to carry one weapon. They were strong physically as well. Both the men and the women, they had this physical strength to themselves. So that's something we should also take seriously. So what is Khabib known for? What type of fighting style? You guys should know this. What type of wrestling? Grappling. Good. What is grappling? It's based around submissions. Good. Sorry? Yeah, good. So grappling is a non-striking type of martial arts. Meaning, you don't, there aren't strikes to the body with your arms and with your legs. It's about movement and controlling your body with the other person's body to manipulate their body and forcing them into a submission. Does that make sense? Okay, who wants a demonstration? Alright, I'm here. Alright, <laughs> All right, just very simply, okay? I'll just, we're not going to hurt anyone. But, imagine striking, right? When you strike, so boxing for example. Boxing is all about what? Punching, right? So if you get into a boxing stance, you're jabbing, you're hooking, you're uppercutting, right? So these are strikes to both the face and to the body. And he's doing the same back to you. But with what? With grappling, you don't strike the opponent, right? You manipulate their body in comparison to your body so that you can bring them into a submission. So, we're just going to act this out very slowly and it'll be super dramatized. So, you guys, it's not real, obviously, but just watch. So, if Hamza is coming at me with a punch, for example, right? So, go slow motion punch, right? What I learn is to redirect his motion and, for example, get behind him. This is a very simple, it's just called, called an arm drag, right? It's called an arm drag. Someone exposes their arm, you can step behind them. Now see how I got his bicep here? I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep sliding my arm into and around his neck. Then I lock it and bring it back here. Now I have him in a choke. So here, did I ever strike him? No. I never hurt him. He's not ever going to bleed. Right? But I have him under my control. Then, if he tries to get out of here... Are you okay? You're breathing? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> right? If he tries to wiggle out of it, I just position him down so now he doesn't have balance either. And then if I want to start squeezing, I can start squeezing until he chokes and he'll tap out. <laughs> right? So it's very simple. But that's one example. So if you guys saw the Conor McGregor fight with Khabib, Connor was on his knees and his hands. Khabib had his back and this is the choke that he performed. 
to submit him. And then Connor tapped, right? In grappling also, thank you Hamza, round of applause for Hamza. <laughs> grappling also what? It, majority of it takes place on the ground, right? So if you're fighting at a height, if you're fighting standing up, and someone gets hurt, what's going to happen to that person? They're going to fall. And if they fall and they're unconscious, they're at risk of what? Hurting themselves. They'll hit their head, they'll bang their head, they'll hit the ground, they can begin to bleed, so on and so forth. But if the people are already on the ground, and that person gets injured, they're not going to get hurt more. So the type of fighting style as well, that Khabib is known for, this Dagestani type of grappling, also exemplifies a very important part of our religion. What is that? That with everything that we do, whether it's something as aggressive as fighting, wrestling, whatever it may be, that we do it, in the most merciful way as possible to our opponents. The most merciful way possible to our opponent. So there's a hadith that the Prophet says and says, Inna Allah katab al ala kulli shay. That Allah has written over everything to have excellence and beauty in it. فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْقَتْلَ So when you are fighting someone, to fight them with excellence and to fight them with mercy. وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْذِبْحَ And when you are even sacrificing an animal for the purposes of slaughter, to even treat that animal with beauty and excellence and mercy. So with any type of interactions and engagements that we have, even to the point of martial arts, the best way to engage in these types of actions is with ihsan, excellence, beauty, and mercy. And you can see that demonstrated by Habib. So one of the comments that Justin Gaethje said at the end of the fight, in the last fight after Khabib submitted him, he said, I have the quote, let me actually find the quote exactly. So even the fighting style that Fabi demonstrates is filled with, filled with what? Yes, uh, beauty, excellence, and mercy. Making sense? Yes. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, let's just do a quick recap. We learned about Alhamdulillah, and it has two meanings, right? Thana, praise, and shukr, gratitude. We also learned about what else? What was next? Why are you staring at me? You guys just said you're taking notes. I, I never said that. Hamza said that. Hamza, Hamza what's, what's next? Uh, <laughs> I'm starting now. <laughs> it's empty. It's empty. It's not starting now. The note app is empty. It's, it's empty. Now. 
right? We also learned about trying to incorporate Muslim language into our daily lives. So to not be shy to say Assalamu alaikum. To not be shy to say Insha'Allah, Masha'Allah, Alhamdulillah. To not be shy to say these types of words because the more that we use these words, the easier it's going to be for other Muslims to also use them. So we don't have to be shy about these words. And then we learn about becoming strong, not just spiritually, not just intellectually and mentally, but also to become strong physically. And then, of course, about the mercy even in the type of fighting style that Habib has. So these all demonstrate this first aspect of Habib. What type of fighter is Habib? He's strong, he's proud to be a Muslim. He embraces that aspect of his identity and he proclaims it to everyone. And no one ever questions him about his Islam. And if someone says something against his Islam, then he is ready to say something and fight back. So that's the first aspect. Right? All of this is taken from that first sajda that he makes. He is first fighting for the sake of Allah. What is the second aspect that we said in that? Was the reason why he was crying. Right? The reason why he was crying when he had that victory. And what was that reason? His father's passing. His father's passing. Good. His father passed away and so all of these emotions rushed into his heart and he began to cry. So this demonstrates then the relationship that he had both with his father and his mother. So his father was his number one supporter. And his father is the one who wanted to see him as champion. And so whenever Rabbi would fight, he would do it for the sake of his father. And so he dedicated his life to serving his father in this way. And then after his father passed, what did his mom tell him? Stop fighting. After his father passes away, his mom tells him now, stop fighting. No more. So what does Khabib say? Last one. After this fight, I promise you, my mother, I will never fight again. So after Khabib wins, 29 and 0, he says, because my mother asks me to, I am giving up fighting. What does it mean to give up fighting for Khabib? He retires, yeah, but what else does that mean? He's throwing away the life of so hard for him. Every type of material gain that he dedicated his life to up until this point, <laughs> all for one request from his mother, he's throwing it away. Championship title for the MMA, the world championship, this is not talking about your club basketball or football championship. This is the world championship. The best fighter in this division. He sacrifices it for his mother's request. In one fight, these fighters make millions of dollars. Millions. And he's saying, I'm not going to fight even for millions of dollars because if you put my record of 30 and 0, if you put my championship title, if you put all of these things on one side and on the other side, it's my mom asking me to do something, I'm always going to take the side of my mom. That's the closeness that he had with his mother. Such an intimate relationship that she made one request and he gave it all up. So what does this tell us about Habib then? Yeah. Yeah, of course. 
who's oh I don't have this is this brother fight? I don't think the brother fights. His cousin. his cousin. I know his cousin fights. And then he has a protege, his mom, who he coaches. But I don't think his brother fights. Yeah. But we can check that. But I'm pretty sure, yeah. Khabib's brother? What's his name? It's his cousin, right? Yeah, I know his cousin's a fighter, and then he has Islam Mahmachev, he coaches him. But I don't think it's his brother. So the point then is that for based off of just the request for his mother, what is the example that he is giving to all of us that we need to have these strong relationships with both our mothers and our fathers? That that's what it means to be a world champion. It doesn't mean to be a world champion that you can beat anyone that comes into the ring with you. It doesn't mean to be a world champion that you're undefeated. It doesn't mean to be a world champion to do any of these things. The most important thing for Khabib was that I'll do it all for my father and I'll give it all up for my mother. That's the type of example that Khabib is sending for us. That's, if we want to be like Khabib, that's the type of example that we need to incorporate into our lives. How can I be so dedicated to my parents that I can do everything for them and give up everything for them? Okay, so I asked you a question at the beginning. What was the question? What does his name mean? Why is that question important? It does. There's a very important aspect of it that represents who he is. Right? His name is very important to him. Did he choose his name? No. Who knows another very famous individual? Even one of Khabib's role models. One of the greatest fighters in history who chose his name. Muhammad Ali. Right? What was Muhammad Ali's name before Muhammad Ali? Cassius Clay. And then, when did he change his name? When he converted. Right? So Cassius Clay is this individual, boxer, fighter, converts to Islam and changes his name to Muhammad Ali. So he obviously takes a lot of pride in his name. His name means a lot to him. So what happens with Muhammad Ali? Right? What happens with Muhammad Ali when his name is in question? Do you know the story? So it was against Ernie Turab. Good. Right? So in his warm up, in his uh, pre-fight with Ernie Terrell. Ernie Terrell <coughs> continues to call Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay. To the point that Muhammad Ali gets up more and more and more upset. Such that they've never seen him so upset before. And he keeps telling Ernie, my name is Muhammad Ali. And he says what? Cassius Clay. He says, my name is Muhammad Ali. He says, Cassius Clay. He says, my name is Muhammad Ali, and you're going to call me that. And I'm going to beat it out of you. I'm going to beat my name out of you. So when they go up and they fight against each other, while they're in the middle of the boxing ring, Muhammad Ali is giving him a beatdown that he's never seen before. With the speed of Ali and the strength of Ali over and over and over again. Screaming at him, what's my name? What's my name? What's my name? What's my name? Over and over and over and over again. Until he beats Ernie Terrell. Because he didn't call him his name properly. 
Muhammad Ali took that seriously. Because he knew that his name meant something. He knew that Muhammad Ali meant something. But now, what happens? Oh, my name is too hard to pronounce for the teacher and for the other people at school, so I'm going to shorten my Muhammad to Mom. Oh, it's too hard for people to say my name the way that it's supposed to be pronounced. So I'm going to change the pronunciation of my name. My name is too long to spell, so I'm going to just put my initial. Why? Why are we so quick to give up our names? Why is it so easy for us to just say, I'll shorten my name so that other people are more comfortable around me? When people like Muhammad Ali fought, so that people would call him the right name. He took pride in his name. He had honor in his name. And the same thing is with Khabib. So what does Khabib's name mean? Khabib, can you guys see it in your minds? So just get rid of the K. What does it spell? Habib, what does Habib mean? The beloved. The beloved. What is the beloved? Who is the beloved of Allah? The Prophet His name is the title of Muhammad So his name is sacred now. His name is the title of the best of mankind. Muhammad so when people are out there chanting Khabib, 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 what are they chant? What are they chanting? They're chanting the title of Muhammad That because of the victory that Khabib has, all of these millions upon millions of Muslims and non-Muslims are shouting. Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what does his last name mean? You who had part of it. What was the, what was the part that you had? Good. So you know that the second half of his name means Muhammad. What does the first half mean? Just spell it out. Yeah. Nur. Good. The light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And what was the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he used to make every single day? Allahumma ja'alni fi qalbi nura, wa fi lisani nura, wa fi sam'i nura, wa fi basadi nura, wa an yameeni nura, wa an shibani nura, wa fi fawqi nura, wa fi tahti nura, Allahumma ja'alni nura. Every single day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would recite this dua. The dua of light. That, oh Allah, place within my heart light. Place in my hearing light. Place in my eyes light. Place on the right of me light. And on the left of me light. Place above me light and below me light. Oh Allah, make me light. This was one of the du'as that the Prophet would recite every single day. The du'a of light. So what is Khabib's name then? The beloved, the light of Muhammad What a powerful thing. What a powerful thing. The beloved, the light of Muhammad And all of your names are important. Every single one of your names is important. Names represent who you are. They're a reflection of your soul. They're a reflection of your character. They're a reflection of who you ought to be. So Khabib took his name seriously. Muhammad Ali took his name seriously. 
And each and every single one of us should take our Navy seriously. Okay. Any other questions so far? Everyone doing okay? All right, let's look at this other idea now. So now we have a few ideas about what Fabib is, right? About what he stood for. Okay, so who, who was able to follow a few of Khabib's fights? Are you guys familiar with like the Conor McGregor fight? Yeah, okay. So what was different about the Conor McGregor fight versus all of the other opponents that Khabib faced? Uh, Conor McGregor was more like, uh, aggressive, kind of like on him, giving his press conference and stuff. He was like attacking Islam, like his family. Good. Anyone else want to add anything? Let's see. You haven't said anything for a while? Yeah. Good, right? He attacked both Khabib and he attacked his religion. So all of the other opponents that Khabib had, oh, you guys want to add some stuff? Yeah, go ahead. Good family. Um, I believe it's one of the most strikes in that fight or in other fight has been. Oh wow, okay. I didn't know that either. Good. Right, yeah. Yeah, so this was an opponent then. Yeah, you wanna add some stuff? The whole bus thing. The whole bus thing with the chair and the window breaking, yeah. Sorry? Oh, the yeah, end, yes. So, again, yeah, coming after family. Yeah. I'm trying to like, force him to drink alcohol, like a shove in his face. Right, because of his entire company and all that stuff. Good. I think in the final, that fight, we punched the potter in the face with the final bound of that grappling. Right, okay, so good. So why was Khabib then, why was his response so aggressive? Because Connor did these three major things. He attacked Khabib's religion, he attacked Khabib's family, and he made fun of basically everything that Khabib stood for. So yes, of course he attacked him personally, but other people also attacked him personally. But as soon as someone began to make fun and mock the religion that Khabib followed and his family members, people who he doesn't have control over, that's when Khabib said, enough is enough. So this shows us a different lesson. This shows us when it is wise to be aggressive and to stand your ground, Versus when it's okay to be lenient and let the other person be whatever way that they're being. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that this is a quality of the believers. This is a quality of the believers. That with other believers, with other people who they get along with, they are caring and kind and merciful, but with their enemies, they have Isa. They have honor. They have dignity. They have respect. They have courage against their enemies. So, when someone attacks you personally, if you have an enemy that's picking on you, if you have an enemy that's making fun of you, if you have someone at school that's attacking you, and you are able to bear that burden, 
then you continue to bear that burden. If it's not affecting you, you and what wants to the thing, the part of you that wants to respond is your ego, then you wait. You ignore what they're saying. You hear what they say and you shrug it off. It doesn't mean anything to me. You can make fun of me all you want. But the moment they dishonor your religion, the moment they disrespect your friends, the moment they disrespect your family, when they come after people who you are meant to protect, then you put your foot down. You don't talk to my friend this way. You don't talk to my sibling this way. You don't talk about my parents this way. You don't talk about my religion this way. You don't talk about my prophet this way. You don't talk about my Allah this way. And then you stand up to them. So how do you know when to stand your ground and when to be lenient? This is how we learn. If they're coming after you, you let it go. If they come after something that you are supposed to protect, you stand up and fight for that thing. Connor came after his religion, he came after his family, he came after his father. So Khabib went after him. That's a quality of a believer. To defend the people who you are meant to protect. But anyone else, when they go and attack Khabib, he lets it go. He's cordial with them. He's nice with them. He's easy with them. So there's a famous story of Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali radiallahu anhu was a warrior. Right? We mentioned his name already. The fourth Khalifa. In one of the battles, before the battles would begin, so you have a large group on one side and a large group on the other side. Before these battles would begin, you would have individuals that would meet before the battle to have a duel, a one-on-one -on -one fight. And so during that duel, that one-on-one -on -one fight, Ali radiallahu an defeated his opponent. And as he's going to defeat his opponent and deliver the final blow, the opponent spits in Ali radiallahu anhu's face. So then Ali, as he wipes off the spit and he's going to strike again, he stops himself. And he returns back to the army. So then they ask him, Ali, you are about to deliver the final blow. Then he spat in your face. Then you were going to do it again, but you stopped. What changed? He says, the first time I did it was because I was doing it for the sake of Allah. The second time that I did it, it's because I was doing it for myself. So the second time I stopped. Does that make sense? So to honor yourself, to have dignity and respect, but when do you defend and when do you protect when it's for your? family members and when it's for your religion and the people that you're meant to protect. Does anyone have any questions? You guys learned hopefully a little bit about Khabib, some lessons that we can take from his practices, from his life, from the way that he fights all of these things. Does anyone have any questions?